Martio here. Welcome to a very dark and dingy Northampton. It's absolutely horrible out there. It is absolutely pouring down with rain. It's windy, it's horrible, it's dark. And we won't be going for a walk just yet. But we're going to start this week with um, a new story. And this is one that quite a lot of you have been asking for. And it's taken a little while to put together because of the catalogue. Um, and that is Tangerine Dream. So what we're going to do, we're going to go through the decades. And then we're going to end up with all their soundtracks. Because they've made quite a few soundtracks as well. So we are going to do the whole lot, which I think I have found. So we go, so Tangerine Dream. Founded in 1967 by Edgar Rosé or Foz. Now my German's not very good, so I do apologise if I get these wrong. You know me and my pronunciations. Um, and he was the constant member until his sad death in 2015. The best liner for this group was its mid-1970s trio of Edgar Froze, Christopher Frank and Peter Bauman. Uh, and then in 79, Johann Schmeling replaced Peter. This line that then that lineup was doing all their movie soundtracks. And since 2015, um, the group has been under the leadership of Thorson Questling. Uh, and his part since um, Edgar's has been the most longest serving in the band. Uh, and at the moment, uh, it is violinist. Ashiko Yamani, who's a wonderful, she is a wonderful violinist, and Paul Frick. So there's going to be lots of different people in this band. And that, of course, Tangerine Dream are considered a pioneer in acting electronica. Um, now, when it, for me, I do like Tangerine Dream, but I only like certain bits. Um, I think my favourite period will be the 80s. As though I do like a lot of the stuff in the 70s, I haven't got the same. They were not very consistent for me personally. I know there's a lot of you that love their 70s stuff. And I, I appreciate it. But um, I had struggled with some of their stuff. So let's get cracking. So during the 1970s, they released nine albums. And coming in at number nine we have their third album and it was a double album released in 1970 called two and it's called Zit or English Time so claim on here is Edgar Christopher and Peter and they play all sorts of synthesizers and generators and glitch guitars joined by former Tanger Dream Dream member Steve Schreider Florian and additional musicians helping them out is Florian Fickle the Cologne Shell Cello Quartet, Christopher Christian Valbracht, Joachim von Grimbau, Hans Joachim Brun, and Jan Has Luck or Luck. So the first track on here is called The Birth of Liquid Plages. Yeah. Now as I said at the beginning, I did really find some of their sovereignty stuff a bit too much. And this is one of them. It's just lots of noises for 20 minutes. Like there's no melody to it. There's no percussion. I didn't do anything for me. And I really struggled to listen to it. Side two is Nebulous Dawn. It's just no different. It's just like a drone with little bits thrown in it's got a little bit more than the first song but it's still very boring um side c origin of supernatural probabilities it's very simple there's a little bit of variation we've got some warbles and noises on it but it's still a little bit flat for me and zeet itself it doesn't get any better to me. It's just a constant noise. And it, it's not musical in one little bit for me. 
this was hard to listen to this i didn't listen to it in one go i guess put, kept putting it on i i haven't listened to this album in years um i have heard it but i i this is what i think i know why i just can't get on with it so unfortunately i can only give that a zero because there's nothing on there that i really really like okay then coming in at number eight we've got the fourth album from ninth March 1973 and it's called Atem which in English means breath so it's Edgar Peter and Christopher on this the first track is called Atem and I just love the start of this you've got the wind or something it's like a howling wind and then you get this frenetic sort of sequencing which is great uh, and then you sort of count clients and you get this sultry keyboard which is really good and then it, about halfway through it sort of stops and just keeps on the same sort of thing well, it's a shame because the first 10 minutes is absolutely brilliant of this track okay the next track is called funny genre i do struggle with this as well it's just one note and lots of sound effects for 10 minutes it just didn't do anything for me circulation of events now this is a shorter track it's it's still quite on on one note but at least there's a little bit more going on around it it's not so bad but my favorite track on here is the shortest track on here and it's called wan short got more depth got some percussion in there and it really is good. I do like that short bit. It's only three or four minutes long, but it's very good. I struggle with this album again, except the last track. Um, unfortunately, but it's a little bit better than Z. So I'm going to give this an RTO ranking of two out of ten. Okay, then coming in at number seven is the debut album released in June 1970 and it's called Electronic Meditation. This has got Edgar Froze on it, Conrad Schnitzler, Klaus Solch, Solch, Jimmy Jackson, that's an easy name for me to say, and Thomas Kierisling. First track is called Genesis. It's a little weird and wonderful lots of little sequences on it but it's 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 just good structure i don't mind that one then we have journey through a burning brain it sort of plods along and then now and again you get these lovely little bits of some lovely keyboard swirls in this um it's not too bad it's not too bad then we have cold smoke now this track does take about six minutes to get going, but once it does, it's brilliant. It's got some church organ on it, uh, lots of little bits of guitar, uh, and the last part of this is really good. It sort of builds up to the to the main event, as they say. Then we have Ashes to Ashes, my best thing on here. Love the guitars on it. It really works with the synchronising synthesizers. Really good. Then we got Resurrection. Now this is awesome. Uh, it's like being in church. It's like a chant in Latin. Wonderful harmonies. Um, and that was the last track. Again, this is one of them albums that I think out of the whole album, there's about 20, 10, 15 minutes of good music most of that comes on the latter tracks um so i'm going to give this an rto ranking of three out of ten okay coming in number six we have the eighth album cyclone uh edgar christopher and we've got stephen jolliff doing vocals it's the only album that's got a vocal on it from them and kraus kruger First track on here is called Bent Cold Sidewalk. I don't mind this. Uh, lovely bit of floating here, sequencing. 
The vocal mm, is strange, having vocal on a Tangerine Dream, but it works, it's not too bad. Then we have Rising Runner, I, my favourite track on here. Uh, I like It's very catchy. Nice tune to it as well. The vocals are a bit there, but forget that, it does sort of work. Then we have Magriel Meridian. This is good. It's uh, got lots of interesting keyboard stabs here and there, a little bit of guitar in there, and it, it breaks the track up. Some nice violin thrown in there. It's one of the best tracks on the album. I think this is a pretty decent album. It is the one that's more gelled. It's got a little bit of more zing in it. So I'm going to give this one an RTO ranking of 6 out of 10. Okay then, coming in at number five, second album from 1971, and it's called Alpha Centuri. It's Edgar, Edgar Christopher and Stephen Schroeder. We've got Udo Denberg on the flute and voice, and Ronald Pulick on synthesizers. First track on there is called Sunrise in the Third System. Really like this, you've got a, like a church organ, and I love church organs and what well, I don't know if it's a theremin or not but it it really does add to it it's sort of that early Jean-Michel Jarre as well uh, it's really is good what a good track that is then we have Fly and Collision of Co Cosmos Cosmos Solar interesting track got a lot of sound effects on it bit bizarre but uh, I quite like it in a nice way then we have Alpha at Century itself. I think this is brilliant. Uh, it's probably one of their best pieces. I like how it's split into little segments and they flow lovely. You got, you know, it goes up, lots of ups and aggression. So then it comes down to a gentler side. And um, I think this really works. Definitely the best track on the album. Uh, pretty good album. There's some really nice moody pieces in this. Alpha Centauri itself is just superb. And uh, I'm going to give this an RTO ranking of 7.5. Okay, then coming in at number four, we have the seventh album from 1976. And it's called Stratosphere. So it's Christopher, Edgar and Peter. The first track on... Uh, this one is the title track, Stratosphere, one of my favourite pieces of music by Tangerine Dream, and it's my favourite on here. I just love how this builds up. Uh, the keyboards just sing, the little la la layers here, little layers there, little bit of percussion. Um, wonderful sort of flowing keyboards on this, absolutely terrific track. The Big Sleep in Search of Hades is next. I love the start of this. Got some wonderful flute on here as well. A little bit of harpsichord sounding. The phasing keyboard that keeps coming in and out invokes this more. It really is great. Then we flip it over to side two and we have 3 a.m. at the border of the marsh from Ockenfecki. This just sounds like it could have appeared in an episode of Doctor Who from the 70s absolutely brilliant sort of music I love that repeating beat the rich keyboards on it it is really good Invisible Limits another of my favourite tracks on here it's the bassy sort of sound you get uh, fantastic sort of sound effects on it really using the, the um, technology of the day really like this album I've played this quite a lot I it's one that uh, is in my collection, and I'm going to give this an RTO ranking of 7.7. .7. Okay, coming in at number three, we've got the sixth album from 75, and it's Rubicon. Edgar, Christopher, Peter. First pit is Rubicon Part 1. The first seven minutes of this is eerie mystique. And then when you get that, you get to about eight minutes, it really picks up with that vibrating sound. Definitely very Jean-Michel Jarre as well. 
And this is obviously what Jean was Michel Jean was doing when he started. I think they all sort of he got sort of influenced by this. It's wonderful. Uh, it's my favourite part of Rubicon, the side one. And then on side two is part two. Uh, just it starts off with a drone. Uh, interesting stuff. There's a little bit of speaking, but I think part one edges it for me. It's it's got the it's the peak of this song, part one. But the whole thing is really good. Um, this is classic Tangerine Dream for me. Two bits of continuous music, which I really love this album. So I'm going to give it an RTO ranking of 8 out of 10. Okay, coming in at uh, number 2. A lot of people's favourite album. It's one of my favourites. From 1973, Parader. Uh, Edgar Christopher and Peter. Title track, Parader is the thing. Classic. I love the phase and sequencing in this at the beginning. Uh, it, it's just, the highlight is that deep bassy bit in the middle. Really rattles around your head on the headphones. I love the sounds they create on this. It Then it goes into this really creepy keyboard towards the end. Absolute classic Tangerine Dream of the 70s. And we got Mysterious Semblance at the Strand of Nightmares. This one is, it tends to be a little bit long in places, but it is absolutely brilliant. Um, I just love the sort of phasing in this. It sort of goes through your head. Really good. And then we have movements of, of uh, visionary. Again, it's just wonderful pieces of phasing and sound. Sequence C is the last track it's more gentle lovely sequencing but it's a, i just like listening to this piece of music late at night i just love this album it's one of them albums you can listen to at night uh i used to listen to this a lot when i was on long haul over overnight flights flying back from america and the caribbean when you, and uh, them sort of places so it is one of them that you could drift away on so I'm going to give this an RTO ranking of 8.3. But my number one album of the 1970s is their ninth album from 1979. So it's the last one of the decade and it's Force Majeure. This is Edgar Christopher and joining him on this is Klaus Kruger on drums and guest cellist. Edward Mayer. The first track on here is called Force Majeure, the title track. I think this is one of my favourite pieces of the 1970s. It's really upbeat. Uh, it's a little bit different for Tangerine Dream. They were moving, starting to move forwards. New decade on the horizon. Uh, I love the bit in the middle, about three quarters of the way through. You've got this wonderful keyboard. There's a guitar solo on here. Uh, and then it sort of s slows down. You get this lovely keyboard solo at the end. And it's just a brilliant track. I love the um, key change in it. It's, it's my favourite piece on the album. Up next is Cloud Burst Flight. Really nice melody. They're starting to put more mel melody into the um, music. Some great keyboard work on here. Just a brilliant track. And the last track is called Through Metaphoric Rocks. Very dramatic start. Straight in your face. Some lovely phasing on this. Some wonderful piano pieces as well. You can see this band starting to develop. There's some new brand sounds on there. Uh, really good synthesizer on this. Great track to end the album. My favourite album because this is where they sort of up their game even more. There was... Gradually towards the end of the 70s, they were just developing more and getting into a groove. I think this is absolutely a wonderful album using the modern technology that was available in 1979. And they, they were starting to look forward to the next decade. Wonderful album. Every track on here is just great. 
So I'm going to give this an RTO ranking of 8.5. So there we go. There's part one. Um, next week we will look, of course, at part two, which is the 1980s, where I took what they started and developed it even more. So I'm looking forward to that. So up next is the new uh, video that we do on a Mondays and it's a perfect side where I pick one of the great albums and I try to find my perfect side. This week we will be doing Diamond Dogs by David Bowie, a firm favourite of Dave and Richard McCook. So I wonder if I agree with them on this one. So I'll join you for that later. Bye for now.